with merriment, the holiday season often brings many pressures. It's no wonder that with so much going on, including holiday parties, entertaining guests, and financial pressures, stress and depression can take over. With some practical tips, you can minimize the effects of stress on your holiday celebrations. All right, welcome to your health with Terrebonne General Medical Center. I'm Martin False, and our guest tonight is Giselle Grisoli. And of course, Giselle is with Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. She's a licensed master's social worker, and there she is, first time on the program. We certainly welcome her aboard. And we're going to talk about tonight a lot, something that we're all very familiar with, especially <laughs> during Christmas and holidays in general stress. So, Giselle, let's just basically define stress for the audience tonight. Okay. Stress is just the way we feel when everything seems to be too much to handle. We feel very overwhelmed and we question our ability to cope. Stress is also a normal psychological and physical reaction and it can be considered positive or negative. But tonight we're going to be talking about negative stress as it can increase over the holidays for many of us. Right, so just to throw something in between. Stress is normal, so we're all okay when we have a little stress. Of course. That's good. Yes. Okay, well, look, let's get into holiday stress because that seems to be a uh, big talk every time. A lot of people feeling the stress, feeling a little bluesy or whatever. So we have some graphics prepared, but give me some, uh, I guess, examples of what causes holiday stress. Okay. Um, financial worries is a big one. Everyone's trying to get Christmas gifts for their loved ones and you know we we sometimes go into debt with that I'm trying to avoid that myself this year okay um, hectic schedules trying to plan all the parties and shopping and everything into your schedule um, pressure to make everyone happy um, job pressure or new job sometimes people get laid off during the holiday season or you know, even start a new job maybe at the mall or a seasonal job, and that can be stressful too. They need some extra money. Um, relationship or family problems, this is very stressful. You know, it's hard to enjoy the holiday season if you're having this going on. Um, too much family togetherness, just being around a lot of relatives at one time, you know, um, that's enough said, really. All, all, all the old <laughs> stories come out, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so just recap and find out your worries. It seems all be compounded because you got to buy presents and gifts mm -hmm. and everything of that nature. And then the, the hectic schedules, everybody, you know, looking at their calendar, party here, mm -hmm. get together here and mm -hmm. everything. So just what, what would you recommend? Take a deep breath when you're filling out your schedule and take one day at a time? Yes, make lots of lists to-do list what you know look at a calendar on your cell phone or on your computer or just an old-fashioned paper calendar and just plan things out yeah. and also on the other hand I wanted to mention um, having one or several loved ones deceased or um, long distances away living in other states or away for work or the military that can also stress families out not having those loved ones there yeah, yeah. And, and very on, nice of you to say because a lot a lot of people have loved ones overseas in the military, so. Right, it can be stress for both of them, the soldiers, definitely, and the family members, you know, the kids not having their father or their mother there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good see point. Them up in presence, yeah. Well, we talked about what causes holiday stress, but let's talk about, and you sort of touched on it a little bit just now in your last statement, but what are the effects of stress, if we could go over that? Okay, there's several. Um, headaches being number one, upset stomach, um, elevated blood pressure, chest pain, panic attacks, they kind of, they go hand in hand, um, problems sleeping, that tossing and turning each night, wondering if you're going to get everything done the next day or stressing over what you didn't accomplish that day or that week. Um, stress can also bring on or worsen certain symptoms or diseases like heart disease and it can also extend the length of illness. Okay, now as, as we move along because I know you're going to touch on this in, in your next set of answers but how does stress and I, I know you see it a lot in your type of work 
but how does stress affect the body? Well, research has found that chronic illness, um, stress can affect that, can, I mean, create chronic illness in people. It affects the immune system and causes as much as 60 to 90 percent of all illnesses. Physical symptoms include damage to the cardiovascular system, chaos for the digestive system, and they can even prevent women from conceiving if you're trying to, they're trying to have a baby. If they're stressed out, it's hard to conceive. Um, some stress-related medical conditions include, but they're not limited to, chronic unexplained pain, high blood pressure, ulcer, heartburn, migraine, heart disease, asthma, PMS, diabetes, obesity, infertility, irritable bowel syndrome, or IBS, um, autoimmune diseases, or skin problems. Okay, and I, I know that's a big list, and you know a lot of people in this area attribute all of their illnesses to the types of food we eat and spices and all, but stress, I've been reading a lot on that, mm -hmm. stress is the main culprit, so you bring up a good point. Everything mm -hmm. you just mentioned, if they learn how to live with stress, mm -hmm. a lot of that diminishes, right? Yes. You can eliminate a lot of those symptoms if you can manage your stress right when it starts. All right. Very good. What we're going to do, we're going to take a break. We're going to continue our discussion on stress. It's all next with Giselle Crisoli. Don't go away. Frequent bathroom breaks? You may have diabetes. To learn more, go to the experts. Diabetes Management Center at TGMC. It all begins here. All right, welcome back to your Health with Terrible and General Medical Center. I'm Martin Falls. Our guest tonight is Giselle Grisoli. There she is. She is a licensed master social worker with Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center at TGMC. We appreciate uh, her being on board. We talked a lot about stress, Giselle. We talked about what it does and what symptoms it creates. But, you know, we, we haven't touched on the aspect of what it can do to a person mentally. And that's a big thing, too, Ed. Yes, very major, along with the health issues. Um, chronic stress can cause emotional damage that wears away at your mental health, leaving you unable to cope with even the smallest of everyday pressures. Um, you ever just run into somebody at the grocery store and they just, you know, you accidentally bump into them and they maybe curse you out. You don't know, right. <laughs> well, hey, what's going on with this person? You their trigger or their fuse is a little short. Yes, you don't know how much stress that person's going through, how right. much stress they're, you know, trying to handle. So also, stress suffered in long term can cause mental health problems like anxiety, eating disorders, depression, or lead to substance abuse. This happens a lot. Yeah. So the more I listen to you, and we'll get into some tips to avoid post-holiday stress, but the more I'm listening to you, just a whole bunch of stuff that goes along with stress. Mm -hmm. So if you can alleviate that stress, you, you're doing a good job. Right. For your mind, your body, mm -hmm. your spirit, for, and, and for the people around you, too. Yes. Yeah, you do it. All right, let's do this. Let, let's talk about some of the tips to avoid post-holiday stress. What are some of them? Okay, reach out to your family, your friends, um, community, religious, or other social groups. If you you know your family and your friends are tied up, or even if not, you might like meeting new people. These can offer support and companionship. Volunteering your time to help others is also a good way to lift your spirits. Don't skip your workouts. Did you write that about me? What? You know I've been skipping my workouts. Oh, well, I, <laughs> I didn't know that, but no. you should resume as oh. soon as possible. Okay, all right. You could work out at home or at the gym. If You know, you could do just some light weights or mm -hmm. yoga if you know how to do that. And then online, they have several, several workout programs that you can just do in your living room on the floor so okay. you can find time to do that 
um, sleep when you're busy, the first sacrifice is usually sleep. You may be busier than ever, but getting enough sleep is essential for keeping your stress hormones in check and your weight from creeping up. And I didn't know that. <laughs> that um, not getting enough sleep could cause you to gain weight. Okay. Avoid eating out too frequently because you don't know how those people are cooking that food or how many calories everything is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't know what they're putting in it. They, they, their favorite seasoning may be not good for us, right? Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so avoid eating out too much. That's something I need to do as well. Okay. Ease up on yourself. Um, if you are trying to fit everything in and do everything in one day, you know, it's okay to cut back on some things and you don't have to work out every single day. Maybe, you know, three or four times a week would be fine. Mm -hmm. okay. um, just taking a walk after dinner is a great option to not working out. Um, drink more water. The holidays lend themselves to drinking more alcohol than usual, which may cause dehydration. Being dehydrated zaps the energy out of you and can make you feel hungry, causing you to overeat. So I try to carry a, a liter of water with me around throughout the day. I try to drink the whole thing and then some more just to make sure that I'm staying hydrated. Mm -hmm. um, learn how to say no. If too many people are asking you to do too many things, learn to delineate what the best things are, what's the most important thing to do and reward yourself. This is very important and I do this all the time because um, as a social worker I have my stress and stress of others as well. My clients and my family so you know take care of yourself. Do the things you enjoy. Don't take yourself for granted. Learn how to say no. That's tough for some people. It is. It's but you scary. can learn huh? Yes. Like you can I'll, always learn no matter how, what age. Like I'll look at the monitor right now and everybody at home say no, no, there you go. All right, next question. How do I and others who are watching, how do we manage stress? The first thing is to identify your stressors, identify what stresses you out the most. While negative events in general are more stressful, be sure to also assess positive changes in your life as they can also be a trigger or a stressor. Once you've identified your stressors, start thinking about strategies for dealing with them and don't feel overwhelmed or like you're alone because everyone goes through stress. Once, um, let's see, seek help and support from family and friends, even a doctor, a psychologist, or a social worker. Um, you know, family and friends just aren't cutting it because a lot of times they can't help you out. Right. So there's nothing wrong with talking to your doctor or talking to a social worker or therapist. And a friend may have heard it all before and just said, oh, you're okay, you're okay, but really it might be a little more deep-rooted. Right, and they might not yeah. have as much stress, so they might not be able to help you out with yeah. some advice. Okay. All right, so you may want to ask them what kind of stress-relieving um, techniques they can offer, what works for them, but find out what works for you. Yeah. Now, are, are there any easy relaxation techniques that you could tell the audience that they could do if they get too stressed? Yes, there's several. Let's see. Far away. All right. First is very simple. It's controlled deep breathing. All you do, you just breathe. You take deep, controlled breaths mm -hmm. through your nose. Make sure to fill your belly up with air, not just through your chest, because a lot of people, they just stop breathing when it hits their chest. Mm -hmm. Fill up your, your whole belly with air, then release it, if you can, through your mouth slowly. And while you're doing this, you can also use visualization, which is just visualizing yourself in a very calm, relaxing environment. Like, you know, mine's the beach. I love the beach. So I just imagine the waves and the smell of the ocean and the sound. Try to take in all the senses of that place while you're taking those deep breaths. Also, I know some people that have those machines on the side of their bed where the waves are rolling. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it almost makes you feel like you're on the beach, I guess. Like so a say. recorder? Like, yeah, like um, a little alarm clock that plays the, okay. the sound of the waves. What are some other mm -hmm. ones? Um, positive thinking and positive affirmations. Just staying optimistic. It's very hard sometimes, but um, creating a positive emotional attitude mm -hmm. can also calm and steady your heart rhythm, um, contributing to great deals. So just think, you know, even though I couldn't find everything on my kids' list, I think they'll be happy with what I found. 
right. and think, you know, I will conquer the day. I will finish, you know, all of my Christmas shopping before Christmas. It might not be today, but right. at least, you know, I got and a And if the kids aren't totally happy with what I found, mm -hmm. they'll eventually get over it. Right. Yeah, so just always look ahead and try to try yeah. to head off the stress. Yeah, because all you can do is try your best. Yeah, you know. that's right. And also um, self-massage. Massage the tense part of your body. Usually my shoulders and my neck get very tense. And I just kind of rub it. Also, right here and right here, we have some nerve endings. Mm -hmm. You just massage in a circular motion and just list the positive affirmations in your head or out loud. That can really help calm me down. I've done this. Um, an old counselor told me that, that I worked with. All right, very good. And self-care is the same thing as, you know, treating yourself, just pampering yourself, doing the things you love to do. Make time to do that because if you're not happy, no one else is going to be happy around you. Right. So if you, if you get a massage twice a week on uh, all through the months and then December comes around and you quit getting your massage because you're too stressed, mm -hmm. go back to getting your massage. Right. Or just right. if you can't afford a massage, ask your spouse or your friends or anyone. And if they won't massage you, just massage yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like your style there. <laughs> well, well, I appreciate it, uh, Giselle. Thank you so much uh, for coming on. And of course, anybody who wants more information on what we talked about, can always go to the Terrebonne General Medical Center website and they will have all the information you need about the different topics that we discuss right here on To Your Health. Giselle, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. You're welcome. And I'll see you on the next round. Okay. All right. Have a good night. We'll take a break. Don't go away. We have more on Bayou Time.